what's up friends welcome to this books and beyond series this is actually the first episode of the series and so we'll be ta- talking about the books i've been reading right and i feel uh, like sharing with all of you right uh, so generally uh, we when we talk about accomplishing big results or maybe do uh, developing some new habits we think of uh, we need to do a lot of changes right we need to do drastic changes in a in the way in a way of life right but uh, in this book uh, atomic habits uh, which is written by a famous author james clear he talks about how we can do small tweaks here and there you know, and actually get uh, good results in the long run right so so let's let's uh, let's understand what he has to share uh, through this book right okay so uh, firstly he talks about uh, the tiny changes the 1% rule secondly he talks about uh, uh, screw goals and focus on the system actually sec third thing he talks about the identity change uh, rather than outcome based changes and fourth and the last uh, lastly talks about the four laws of behavior change okay so let's start uh, understanding one by one so why does one person matter so it's it's all about the compounding effect right like uh, uh, how we can do small things right and eventually uh, it it results in a, it gives us exponential results in a similar way uh, if we think in terms of uh, work uh, in terms of habits right for example if we at the beginning of a year if you start improving ourselves right uh, 1% each day so that will actually result uh, like 37.7 and that is almost 38% better version of when you started in the beginning of the year on the other hand if you become worse uh, 1% each day that would you'll end actually end up being 3.03% at the end of the year that is almost zero right so uh, as the, as the james clear says habits are the compound interest of the self improvement okay so uh as he quotes it time magnifies the margin between success and failure it will multiply whatever you feed it for example good habits make time your ally and bad habits make your time make time your enemy okay so there's one more key factor key concept he talks about the plateau of latent potential for example whenever we start working on something start developing new habit with the, we expect the results to be linear but it's not actually in the, uh, in the reality right uh, initially uh, we uh, we go through a valley of disappointment where we don't see the actual visible results, right? Uh, but uh, if, if we continue, uh, if, if, we, if we persist, if we continue doing uh, the same thing, right? At certain point, we start seeing the exponential results, right? Uh, the visible results. So it is very important to go through this valley of disappointment initially. Second thing he, uh, he talks about uh, skew goals focus on system. Uh, he points down, he paints down few important, uh, few major problems uh, for having uh, a pro- goal based uh, approach first thing is that winners and losers have same goals for example every olympian wants to win uh, a gold medal but everyone doesn't win right secondly it talks about achieving a goal is a very uh, momentary change once you accomplish that particular goal uh, will generally lack motivation uh, to continue to do uh, the same thing again and again third thing goals restrict our happiness uh, we generally think that right if we lo- I'll accomplish this particular goal if we uh, lose X amount of kgs then only i'll be happy about uh, myself uh, fourth thing goals are at odds with the long-term progress right once uh, like if we have measurable goals only right after achieving that uh, particular goals it would be very difficult uh, to to carry through uh, maybe to continue doing the, those things right it, 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 it there's a less chance that it becomes a sustainable uh, lifestyle change okay so the purpose of setting goals is to win the game but on the other hand the purpose of building uh, building systems is to continue playing the game right if you feel uh, uh, focus on action or the process uh, rather than the goals it would be very easy and it's obviously uh, it's obvious that we'll eventually get uh, the the desired results out of it at the end of the process third thing it, it talks about identity change right so for uh, there are different layers of behavior change uh, outer uh, one uh, the outer layer is the outcome based second the inner layer uh, is, is the performance uh, based and third and the the, the inner one uh, is is uh, identity based for example if if i generally what happens that people we generally go uh, uh, the outward approach we we focus on outcomes first and then uh, and least we focus on uh, changing identity for example if i if i if i'll associate myself uh, to be an athlete or the fit person i don't really have to track uh, uh, how much weight i lost maybe how many push ups or maybe how many how much 
how long i've been doing a workout right uh, a duration of a workout if i if i if i think i am a fit person it would be uh, naturally it would be very easy to wake up in the morning and uh, hit the gym or maybe start doing the workout right and keep improving right so uh, identity change over outcome best changes but now let's say i we have understood what are atomic habits what it, why it is important to focus on identity change as an outcome based change right but how to how to change or develop a habit so before we do that there there is something called as a habit loop right so first thing is cue second thing is craving third thing is response fourth thing is reward and it and it repeats right uh, again and again so cue is basic Q is basically a, a clue or the trigger which which triggers the particular habit loop. Second, craving is basically a motivational force uh, that makes us uh, perform that particular habit. Response is actually a task or routine uh, or action that we do, and reward is the end goal uh, of uh, doing that particular habit. Okay, so uh, he talks about uh, the four laws of habit change, how we can actually uh, inculcate uh, or maybe develop those uh, new habits. okay the first thing uh, the first law is making it obvious second thing make it attractive third thing make it easy and fourth thing is make it immediately satisfying making it obvious is basically how you can reduce uh, how you can make clues very uh, obvious right if we if you want to read something if you want to start reading a book right if you if you make that clue very visible right for in front of your desk uh, the work area near the bed it is very obvious that you're going to pick that particular book second thing make it very attractive for example if you want to listen to some podcast right uh, if you associate that thing uh, for example with your workout while working out or maybe going for a walk if you combine it together it, it's very it's, uh, it's more obvious than you're going to do that right uh, uh, Thing, that particular thing third thing make it very easy for example the lesser the fi- friction of doing particular thing is that the, the, the higher the chances we going to repeat that particular thing for example let's say if i want to read a book but i am putting that book in particular uh, in some shelf right and in order to pick that book i have to do a lot of things right i have to move from one room to the another room and take that particular book it's, it's the the lesser the chances i'm going to actually uh, going to read that book but if i if i make it very easy right uh, so it's it's it would be uh, higher the chances that i'm going to perform that particular habit right. fourth thing make it immediately satisfying we generally talk about delayed gratification but unless and until uh, we see something some immediate result some immediate satisfaction or pleasure out of it right uh, Uh, the chances will be very less uh, to perform that particular thing so we need to make it very satisfying for example uh, after doing a workout if you uh, go, if you if you have a, a tasty protein shake right or a tasty protein meal so so that's add as a satisfaction or the pleasure uh, of doing uh, that one hour of a workout and it's more, of, more it will be more obvious or probability will be higher that we're going to do this thing again and again every day okay so If you if you just combine like what we have learned throughout this book, so so there, uh, in order to uh, develop good habits, we need to make clues obvious, and for the good bad habits, we need to make clues invisible. Uh, for good habits, uh, we need to uh, make the craving the attractive, and uh, the the on the other hand, for bad habits, we need to unattractive, ugly. Third thing, it talks about how we need to make the task. of performing the habit easy uh, in time in case of good habits and in case of bad habits we need to make it as hard as possible so we need to increase the friction as much as possible third uh, fourth thing and the last thing is like satisfaction the end goal has to uh, we need to ha- attach some immediate satisfaction or pleasure uh, for doing a good habit and we need to make uh, the bad habits the end results of any unsatisfying one okay so uh so we have we are almost done so the one thing is that right uh, it's it doesn't matter how how long it takes or many how many days uh, it takes to develop a good habit but how consistent how uh, consistent we are for the first thing is like taking a baby steps right uh, going with a small changes but the steady ones second thing focusing on identity based changes rather than focusing on outcome based changes third thing uh, is that uh, perseverance basically we might not see the results immediately but how we can uh, be persistent and consistent with our efforts right will be eventually able to understand it and com- combining all this with the four laws of uh, habit change uh, we can actually develop any any good habit and get out of any bad habit right so thank you so much for your time that's it for today uh, i hope you enjoyed that uh, and have a great day ahead thank you